heads of state and government. Your Excellency, my friend, Ajay Banga, the president of the World Bank Group. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Kenya. On behalf of the people and the government of Kenya, I, quel I welcome you all to Nairobi for the Ida for Heads of State Summit. It is an honor for Kenya to host this Ida replenishment conference at this historic venue, the place where African heads of state recently united with a bold vision. Here, we committed to transforming our continent into a thriving middle income region, leveraging our unique potential to drive global solutions. Today, we build on that legacy by actualizing our potential to provide those solutions through necessary financing. I extend my deepest gratitude to each of you for joining us at this pivotal summit. Your presence not only honors us, but also reaffirms our shared commitment to the International Development Association, our cornerstone for achieving the development goals of our continent and beyond our continent. We convene at a critical juncture, facing a convergence of global crisis. This includes escalating geopolitical tensions that challenge international unity, a deepening development and debt crisis that threatens our economic stability, and urgent climate emergencies that demand immediate and collective action for our planet's survival. Today, we gather here, Kenya and the broader East Africa region, faces severe flooding that devastated communities, destroyed infrastructure, and disrupted our economies. Concurrently, Southern Africa confronts intensifying drought, affecting nations like Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Just last year, the roles were reversed, highlighting our shared vulnerability to extreme weather patterns. As I speak to you in this podium, 10,000 people in Nairobi City are displaced by floods. That is the gravity of the situation. Only a year ago, we had a devastating drought on the other end. This new normal demands our immediate and united action to safeguard our collective future. This underscores the critical role of IDA for Africa Summit. As a cornerstone of financing for Africa, IDA has directed 75% of its total commitments, nearly US dollars 26 billion, to our continent in the last fiscal year, with African nations comprising eight of IDA's top 10 borrowers. This support is not just financial. It is a lifeline for our development and also our stability. And your presence, personal presence, my friend Ajay Banga in this meeting is a demonstration of the centrality of the discussions that will happen in this meeting and your personal commitment to this continent which we appreciate. IDA stands out for its rapid and decisive action during crisis, distinguishing itself from other funding sources. Its demand-driven programs, combined with concessional loans of 40 to 50 years, empower borrowing nations to pursue sustainable long-term development strategies. And this is what we have been asking for. Long-term, concessionary. We now want to discuss in this meeting scale. That is the only aspect that is missing in this configuration. And as IJ Banker said, two things are missing, scale and design. 
make it simpler. Now, more than ever, long-term concessional financing is vital. As many Africans and other developing nations face severe debt crisis, this financial strain hampers our efforts to combat climate change, transition to low carbon economy, and adequately fund essential sectors like education, health, and social protection. We have frequently discussed the financial challenges that restrict our economic capabilities and reduce our investment in resilience and growth. High interest rates lead to unsustainable sovereign debt, complicate refinancing, and destabilize our currencies. Additionally, the rising cost of living, increased commodity prices, and supply chain disruptions severely impacting our food security, healthcare systems, and overall preparedness for response to crisis. Last year, we brought to global attention that African nations pay interest rates up to five times higher than typical World Bank IBRD rates. This year, the situation has worsened. Developing countries are now net contributors to the global economy, contrary to expectations of receiving net inflows. Projections, for example, for 2024 show a net outflow of US dollars 74 billion from IDA countries like Kenya and others to donor nations, while net financial transfers to developing countries have plummeted from US dollars to 25 billion in 2024 to now a low of US dollars 51 billion in 2022. Those statistics are glaring by any measure. Given these conditions, sustainable growth remains elusive for African nations as we allocate more funds to debt service than to crucial sectors like education, health, and social protection. This financial strain was prevalent in two-thirds of African countries even before the pandemic struck. Notably, in 2020, one in every four sub-Saharan African countries dedicated over 17 percent of its public revenues solely to interest payments. The IMF reports that sub-Saharan Africa's ratio of interest payments to revenue has more than doubled in a decade, reaching nearly four times that of advanced economies by the end of 2022. As a result, over half of either recipients today face debt distress or are at a high risk of debt distress. IDA remains their most dependable source of patient capital, with every dollar of donor financing enabling an additional US dollars 3.5 in capital market leverage to amplify development impact. This endeavor transcends financial returns. It is about fulfilling our collective global aspirations. Africa's commitment to economic transformation, reducing poverty and inequality, and enhancing human well-being is essential and demands significant capital investment. Moreover, the global goal of achieving net zero by 2050 cannot be realized without Africa's active participation, a failure which would jeopardize humanity's survival not just African survival, humanity's survival. It is imperative to understand with substantial investment in our vast energy resources, Africa cannot only provide power to all its citizens, including the 600 million currently without access, but also significantly advance global decarbonization efforts. Let me say this uh, broadly. If there was a case to be made 
for a win-win outcome. Ida is the best example. Because everybody wins. The donors win, the recipients win. The donors win because they, it is an investment for them. For the recipients, it is an opportunity. In both cases, we have winners. The donors will put money in renewable energy, in energy in general, and we can continue world manufacturing and industrialization using African mineral resources, using energy that we have in abundance, and using labor that we have in abundance, and we can share the outcome of that industrialization with the rest of the world. By investing in IDA, we unlock 60% of the world's arable and cultivated land for food security and nutrition, not just for Africa, but for the globe. By investing in IDA, we unlock the human resource potential in our continent, Africa being the youngest continent in the world, investing in education, in health, in uh, social protection, gives us the opportunity to provide 40% of the world's workforce by 2050. Investing in, I, in, in IDA gives us the opportunity to decarbonize global economy and provide for green growth. Let me say this. Our continent possesses 60% of the world's prime solar resources, and our untapped renewable energy potential exceeds 50 times the projected global electricity demand by 2040. However, realizing this requires a shift in investment strategies with affordable long-term capital at scale being central. Our proposal and request entail a vision for Africa driven an Africa-driven socio-economic development executed with transparency and inclusiveness, and our case is straightforward. Let me put it this way. Significant capital injection into IDA is crucial. The G20 Independent Expert Group recommends tripling IDA's financing capacity to US dollars $279 billion by 2030 while maintaining the essential concessional nature of its financing. At the very least, and if we cannot do anything else, let us not ignore or wish away this expert advice. We seek not just funding, but a partnership for progress. African nations propose a robust plan for climate positive growth aligning with the Nairobi Declaration from last year's Africa Climate Summit to ensure stable, dignified, and sustainable livelihoods across our continent. Africa is poised to transform its agriculture, water security, and energy access while creating job opportunities for over 4 million youths entering the job market monthly and expanding our small and medium enterprises as well. Central to these opportunities is our commitment to African-led initiatives. We aim to control our destiny, managing our resources responsibly and sustainably to drive Africa's industrialization agenda using our abundant energy, mineral, and human capital resources. Our commitment to transparency and accountability is in our socioeconomic development plans ensuring the efficient and effective use of IDA is central to our plan. We acknowledge the vital role of diverse stakeholders beyond governments and traditional donors committing to deeper and broader engagement to enrich our development outcomes. We are committed to empower the Africa Union Commission to make it fit for purpose with capacity to engage the rest of the world on behalf of Africa. We are committed to reform the Pan-African Parliament to enhance oversight and accountability 
over the Commission and establish an African Court of Justice so that we are ready to engage with the rest of the world. Faced with a relentless challenge of climate change and escalating instability, our unity is our strength. Despite the myriad forces that threaten to divide us, we must remain focused on the ultimate goal, safeguarding the future of our civilization, the human race, and the diverse life forms that share our planet. Africa is eager to contribute to the solution. Our continent offers a viable and promising pathway to a future of prosperity for all humanity, harnessing our rich resources and innovative spirit. IDA's efficiency and effectiveness make it a unique force for good. Africa recognizes this and we don't take it for granted. We are setting an example with our ambitious plan for structural and systemic reforms underpinned by steadfast commitment to tangible results, transparency, and a robust partnership. Given the enormity of the challenge faced by African countries and its global implications as collective emergency, we call on our partners to meet us at this historic moment of solidarity and respond effectively by increasing their IDA contribution from the US dollars 93 billion raised in 2021 to at least US dollars 120 billion in 2024. As we make this call, we as African heads of state and government commit to play our part by taking deliberate and robust actions to improve fiscal discipline, increase domestic revenue mobilization, develop investor-friendly policies, and enhance anti-corruption measures. IDA exemplifies the best of global cooperation, characterized by compassion, lasting dedication, and a fruitful collaboration. By fortifying IDA, we do more than just honor these values. We significantly enhance our joint ability to tackle global challenges. Let us value and expand the reach and influence of this vital resource. Together, let us be bold, let us be ambitious, and let us act with conviction. Thank you, and God bless you.